almost every disease and every medical condition, including weight gain or weight loss and a whole number of other complications and ailments in the human body has a connection with hormones. Today we're going to talk about hormones and understand exactly how hormonal balance is the right way to maintain health in the body and how an imbalance will create innumerable problems right from the mind to the physical self. The human body is built up of almost 50 trillion cells. Now how do these cells work together to build your organs, to maintain your life, to make sure that your heart's beating the right way, your liver, your kidney, your colon, every single organ in the world in your body is comprised of cells. Now these cells have to constantly communicate with each other. Communication is the most important aspect in the human body. Although there's physiology, there's biology, there's chemistry, communication between these 50 trillion cells is responsible and is the reason why you are alive. Every second you're awake and every second you sleep, these cells are constantly communicating with each other doing some function in the human body. Now, hormones are chemical messengers between these 50 trillion cells. So if you have the wrong communication between your cells, you have problems in your body. If you have the right communication, you have a platform of great health, you have the ability to prevent disease, you have the ability to heal. So what are hormones exactly? We have estrogen, we have testosterone, we have adrenaline, we have insulin. All of us have heard of these hormones. Yes, they are hormones. We have to understand that if we're trying to treat a hormonal imbalance, we need to understand how it works. When we have logic and understanding of how the human body works and what hormones are, that's the way we can heal and begin to make lifestyle changes to treat it. So all these hormones are produced by your glands and organs in the human body. For example, the thyroid gland, the adrenal glands, the pituitary glands, the ovaries, the testes and the pancreas produce all of these hormones. So if you have a problem with any of these glands or any of these organs, you have a problem with your hormones. One one imbalance, just one imbalance between hormones in your body can cause innumerable problems. Which is why when we look at the conventional way, the conventional way is absolutely fine so long as we're not getting dependent on it. To only treat a symptom, we ignore the root cause which could be something as simple as a hormonal imbalance. So all these hormones put together, these glands and organs that produce it, is called your endocrine system. Your endocrine system does everything to do with the health of your hormones. Your endocrine system controls the way your hormones work in the human body. So either you're producing too many hormones or you're producing too, too few of them. Or you have them in imbalance and that's when you have problems in the human body. And so yes, we have hormone replacement therapy today. We have pills, birth control pills. We have insulin. We have thyroxine to treat the thyroid gland. Now these are all fine as long as we use it as a crutch when we are diagnosed with a condition that relates to any of these things. But if we decide to be on them for a lifetime because we're told we need to be on them for a lifetime. Now don't get me wrong, there are some people, very few people who may need to be on these treatments who may need to be on these treatments for a lifetime, but for everyone else, it's just a quick fix. It's just a band-aid approach. And instead of making you better, it's actually making you worse. Because all that I mentioned, the hormone replacement therapy, the birth control pills, the insulin, the thyroxine that we're constantly taking because we want to continue living our lives without making an effort to change our lifestyle because these drugs or these fake hormones are making us statistics on our blood reports look good and giving us this false belief that we're healthy, it's false because all of these drugs are doing one thing. They're making your body more and more dependent on them. They are masking all of your symptoms. All of these things are suppressing your symptom. Let's take, example for thi uh, let's take an example of a person with thyroid. If the cause of an underactive thyroid gland was stress and here you are taking more thyroxine and it's showing your levels on your papers to be absolutely good, but you've not changed the root cause of your underactive thyroid gland, which is stress, guess what? You have a bigger problem. All you've done is suppressed the symptom. And now because you have constant stress, because you've never really looked at changing that, you don't just have thyroid, you have high BP, you have a kidney problem, you have cholesterol, you have triglycerides, you have weight gain, you have diabetes, and it goes on and on. 
Not to talk about the side effects because no one tells you the side effects of hormone replacement therapy or birth control pills, which we'll go into detail at the end of this call, or insulin or tyroxine. Just because it's given as a medicine doesn't mean it's safe. There, there are connections between strokes and cancers and an anxiety and reproductive issues and all of that stuff. Ask your doctor. He'll tell you there are side effects for all of these treatments. But we've created a market where we want quick fixes all the time and people are happy to give us quick fixes because that's, that's what apparently makes human beings happy right now. We want a quick fix. We don't want to put an effort to changing our lifestyles and healing completely. So what are the symptoms of hormonal imbalance? It's a vast, vast subject, but the symptoms are very, very clear. Like I always say, the human body gives us signals all the time, all the time through symptoms. Symptoms is your body doing the right thing for you at the right time. So if you have a headache, your body's giving you a signal. It's doing something. If we ignore it and we decide to treat it with a quick fix, we have bigger problems. Infertility. Infertility is one of the biggest, biggest symptoms. Irregular periods, which is so common in our country right now. But no, we have quick fixes like birth control or we have hormone therapy and we have all of these drugs because it makes the condition look a little bit better. So some of the symptoms are infertility, irregular periods, depression and anxiety. Yes, because it involves hormones to keep you happy as well, to keep you calm as well. Weight gain, excessive weight gain or the inability to lose weight is a sign of hormonal imbalance. Like I always tell people, losing weight is not about just nutrition and not about just exercise. If you are struggling to lose weight, you have a hormonal imbalance. Your cells are unable to communicate with each other effectively and your body doesn't get that signal to release the excess fat. There's constant communication and when the communication improves, You'll find that people easily shed that weight. But if you think you can punish that weight off your body through intensive workouts and strict dieting, you're absolutely wrong. In fact, you're creating more of a hormonal imbalance. Then we have fatigue, something which is so common amongst people today. Constant fatigue. They need to wake up to that cup of coffee every morning, three to four cups of coffee. If you need coffee to keep you going through the day, you have a hormonal imbalance. The human body has so much energy. And if you feel fatigued and you need a stimulant to keep you going, that means you have an imbalance. The energy in your body is not being utilized the right way because you don't have the right communication between your cells. Then we have insomnia, sleep disorders. We have low libido and low sex drives. We have digestive issues right from your acidity to your bloating to your flatulence, hormonal imbalance again. And then we have hair loss and hair thinning and then we think, Dermatologists and skin doctors and hair doctors, yep, they're great. But if you think they're going to fix your problem, nope, they're just treating the symptom. If your problem, your underlying problem is a hormonal imbalance, only balancing your hormones will heal you thoroughly. Okay, then we have estrogen. People are pumped up with estrogen because they have low estrogen. But then what does too much of estrogen cause? Endometriosis in women, breast cancers, ovarian cancers, too much of estrogen. Like in an ER positive cancer case is, the, is estrogen dominance. And here we are using HRT and all of these things and never getting to the root cause of a hormonal imbalance which has the possibility of being the root cause of your cancer or your ovarian issue or your PCOD in men. Men are fatigued throughout the day. The stimulants don't work anymore, so they decide to start taking testosterone, external synthetic testosterone. Now, if you have low testosterone naturally, you will be tired. If you have more belly fat and more abdominal fat and less muscle mass, you have low testosterone levels, which means your energy levels are going to be low, your sex drive is going to be low, your libido is going to go be low. And no amount of Viagra or all the sexual stimulants or all the stimulants that you need to take to keep you energetic will work for you because you have a hormonal imbalance and you are not addressing it at the root cause level. And then we have diabetes. Again, what's the hormone involved in diabetes? Insulin. Your pancreas are either not producing the right amount of insulin or your cells are not utilizing the insulin the right way. Communication again. Like in every relationship, to make a good relationship work, you need good communication. What's the best way of messing up a relationship? By stopping communication, distorting communication. Imagine when that happens in the human body with 50 trillion cells. Here we are talking about just two people, maybe your spouse and you, maybe your boss and you, maybe your colleague and you, maybe your child and you. Just two people. And communication is key 
to that healthy relationship. But here we're talking about 50 trillion cells plus in the human body with the wrong communication. And there you have problems. And then we have adrenal fatigue, all that anxiety, all that stress that we go through every single day makes your adrenal glands constantly produce cortisol. Again, a hormone. When cortisol goes up, thyroxine comes down, DHEA comes down, testosterone comes down. One hormone goes up, five or six or seven hormones come down. You see, that's how the human body works. And that's why stress is so dangerous for us, so absolutely dangerous for us. And yet we believe that the human mind finds its way to console. Oh, everyone has stress. Oh, yeah, if I need to build a business, I need to take stress. You know, hard work requires stress. These are all excuses in the human mind. You can do it without stress as well. Or you can do it maybe not without stress, but balancing your stress the right way. Let's get into some of the causes of hormonal imbalance. Food allergies. Today, people have toxic livers. They have slow, sluggish livers full of toxins because of poor lifestyle, too much of sugar and junk, too much of smoking, alcohol, pollution, contaminated food, all of that stuff. I mean, you find people with fatty livers even in the Jain community and vegetarians. Usually fatty livers were in people who just drank alcohol or who were non-vegetarians. Today, you will have... Uh, you will have non-alcoholic fatty livers in even vegetarians and Jains, which speaks volumes about the lifestyle that people are living. Food allergies. Again, every time you eat food out in restaurants or on the road or wherever, do you know the amount of food color that is put into your food? Am I telling you to stop eating out? No. I'm trying to get you aware that if you have a hormonal imbalance, reducing your outside food is one of the first steps to bring that balance back into order. There are more than 50 to 60 different food colors used in different foods. Half of them have direct links to hormonal disorders and even cancers. None of this is regulated. All that green palak paneer that you have, do you think that's really green? The way, try making palak paneer at home and tell me if you get the same green color as a palak paneer served to you in a restaurant. The answer is absolutely no because they are using food color. Now these, aller these colors and these food... The, uh, eventually cause allergies in people with weak immunity. And the first thing that it gets impacted are your hormones. You have one imbalance of a hormone, you can have innumerable uh, problems in the body. Then we have the leaky gut, poor gut health. People have poor gut health today. How do we know that? Because there's so much of constipation, acidity, flatulence, thyroid disease, autoimmune disorders like lupus, skin diseases, eczema, psoriasis. All of these things means you have a leaky gut. IBS as well. You have a leaky gut, you have the wrong molecules going into your bloodstream where they're never supposed to be and that's when your immune system flares up and starts attacking your own body. And that's how we have a hormonal imbalance right then. And then we need tyroxine, insulin and all of these other things. Then you have constipation, one of the chief causes of a hormonal imbalance. This is so important. If you are constipated, all of the pharmaceutical drugs may help you and you need to pass out your motion, so use it. But if it's become a way of life, I can't tell you how many people I meet every single day who take laxatives every single night to pass a motion in the morning. All I can say is you are putting yourself into so much of danger. At some point, your bowel movement is going to lose that muscle control and you will never be able to go a day without taking a laxative. With a laxative, you are also flushing out a lot of healthy bacteria from your system, a lot of salts and electrolytes and water as well. You need to fix the problem at the root cause. Living with constipation is literally, literally so dangerous for you. Okay, especially in women, when you are constipated, all the estrogen in your colon is getting backed up into your system, back into your liver, back into your cells. So you're creating a cycle of estrogen dominance, which is why people with cancer especially should never be constipated and they should do whatever they need to do to make dietary changes, lifestyle changes to get rid of that constipation or else it's actually making you sicker and sicker. No matter which hospital you're in the world getting treatment, it is making you sicker and sicker if you're acidic and if you are constipated. Then we have body fat. If you are carrying excessive body fat in your abdominal region, it clearly means you have a hormonal imbalance. Yes, it can also mean that you're lazy, you're not disciplined, you're a glutton, you eat too much, all of those things. But it is telling you that you have a hormonal imbalance for your cells in your stomach region and abdominal to store more of that fat, you have a hormonal imbalance. Then we have inflammation. There are so many people living with inflammation today. That's another root cause of hormonal imbalance. Then genetics, of course. A small promotion, a proportion of it, we can't use it as an excuse because remember, we all have good genes and bad genes, but the body needs a trigger to make a bad gene express itself. 
in most cases. And there are some people who are just unlucky and genes play a massive role. Then we have toxins and toxicity from the food that we eat, the pollution, the water that we drink, all of the junk food, the outside food, we're getting more and more toxic. And because we get more and more tox toxic, your cells stop communicating with each other. When there are too many toxins in your body, your cells cannot communicate the right way and we have a hormonal imbalance and we have disease. And then of course, stress. The very fact that stress impacts a hormone called cortisol, which impacts so many other hormones, shows you the direct link between anxiety and chronic stress. I'm talking about chronic stress. Stress is good for us. That's acute stress. Stress levels go up. We get motivated. We do our job and it comes down again. That's good stress for us. The stress that goes up and stays up and stays up and stays up is dangerous for us. So what's the solution? Number one, healthy fats in your diet. And here we are people still asking for diets and, you know, con restrictive diets and going low carb and going low fat and cutting out oil out of their diet and doing all this miserable oil free cooking and all of that crap. Number one, hormones. We're talking about hormones. You need fat in your body to make hormones. If you have low fat, you will have wrong, the wrong amount of hormones in your body. Hormones are created by healthy fats. So be it your ghee, your coconut oil, good quality butter in moderation, your olive oils, your unrefined oils, your nuts, your seeds, all of these things are healthy fats that are required for your body to make hormones and to make cholesterol, which is required in your body, for your brain, for your cells, for every single function, including communication. We need vitamin D3, which is a precursor to hormones. You have low vitamin D3, you have a hormonal imbalance and almost one in two people I meet every single day has low vitamin D3 levels. It's no longer just about osteoporosis or your bones, it's bigger than that. It's about your hormones. If you don't have low vitamin D3, it's useless. Everything else that you're doing is useless. You're not giving your body what it needs to make hormones. So let's not even talk about a hormonal imbalance. You don't even have the right amount of hormones. If you don't have the right fats in your diet and if you don't have vitamin D3. <clears throat> you have something called adaptogen herbs, things like ashwagandha, which has existed in our civilization for years and years and years. These help balance hormones automatically, which is why Ayurveda has so much of it, which is why the West is using so much of ashwagandha from India today to balance their hormones. And what are we moving to? Antidepressants and sleeping pills and depression medication and more tyroxine and insulin and all of that crap because we don't want to make an effort to change our lifestyle. Ashwagandha exists in our own country. It can help you balance your hormones naturally. And then we have medicinal mushrooms like reishi mushroom, like chaga mushroom that exists all over the world. In almost every country, some strain of mushroom grows, which has been used as medicines to balance hormones for the longest period of time. But no, you can't patent a mushroom. You can't have a pharmaceutical sell it to you. So there's no money in the industry for mushrooms, which is why there's no research going into it. Yet our ancestors heal themselves using mushrooms, ashwagandha, and so many natural herbs. And then we have emotional imbalances, which has a direct impact on your hormones. You're sad, all those 50 trillion cells, you're angry, jealousy, lust, whatever it is, they vibrate with the feeling that you have and the thoughts that go through your mind, which is why it's so important. Sometimes you can be depressed. Yep, there, there, there is real depression that may require real treatment. But we also have to understand it involves your hormones. And if you're not looking at hormones in your treatment plan, you're going to constantly be on one medication after another. So what comes into when it comes to emotional imbalances? Your breathing, your deep breathing is in your control. It's inexpensive and it's free, but we're so lazy to do it every single day. We're so indisciplined to do it even when it's inexpensive and free, which is why nothing free in life ever works. It's taken for granted, it's trampled upon. Only when there's a price put to it, it's respected. That's how human mentality is today, unfortunately and sadly. These things are available free. I mean, someone who has high blood pressure and a hormonal balance just has to stop and breathe. But guess what? That person wants to see immediate results, which only a pill, which is designed to do that, can show you. But you don't want to sit and take 10 minutes to breathe or 6 minutes to breathe or 5 minutes to breathe because you have that one important call which you think, you know, is so important and more important than your health to take. So breathing can bring about a hormonal imbalance every single day when you do it, when you keep doing it. Like I told you, if you're stressed, cortisol goes up. What's the one thing that can bring down cortisol immediately? No, not your antidepressant, not all your stress drugs.
not alcohol, not smoking, not drugs, anything. Your breath. You take one deep breath and cortisol comes down. You take six and it comes down further. It's as simple as that. Which is why you look at an accident victim. No matter what the case is, the first thing they'll put on the accident victim is an oxygen mask to resume balance in the human body. Breath, oxygen, prana. And yet it's the most misused, inexpensive commodity on this planet. And yet you tell people to breed. Simple stuff like that. People don't want simple. People want complicated because that's how well the media has polluted and corrupted all of our thinking and our mind. Nothing can beat simplicity. There's no price on simplicity. Anyway, coming down to essential oils as well. There's lavender, there's fennel, there's sandalwood, there's thyme essential oils as well, which you can light in a diffuser and smell. Some people ingest it. This can bring a hormonal balance again. A lot of women take evening primrose oil again. Essential oils has its place in medicine and healing and your protection as well. And then we have probiotics as well. Probiotics can help you balance that microflora in your gut, your microbiome. All of us have more bad bacteria than good bacteria. We need to bring that balance because most of your health and your immunity starts in your gut, which means our focus has to be our gut. And then sleep, because all the hormonal balance happens while you sleep. Which is why if you sleep less the next day, why do you have so many cravings? Why are you irritable? Why are you frustrated? Hormonal imbalance. Those cravings are driven by your hormones. Leptin and ghrelin. Leptin, your satiety hormone. If that's suppressed, you're going to constantly feel hungry. Ghrelin, the hunger hormone, is raised when you have less sleep. People with less sleep have suppressed leptin and raised ghrelin. Hormones. That's why you can't control your craving. Which is why anyone who gives you advice, hey, control your cravings and you lose weight, it's never going to work. You've got to change the terrain of your body, balance your hormones so those cravings start reducing naturally. You can't fight it. You can't use willpower to fight it. Willpower has a shelf life. You'll win for maybe a week or two weeks and you'll be frustrated and depressed and then you'll break and you'll binge. Coming to birth control pills because there are just too many young girls and women on these birth control pills. Yes, it has its place to prevent, you know, unwanted pregnancies and all of that stuff. But women who are taking it as a quick fix and young girls, mothers who are allowing their girls to take it. I can understand if it's really, really, really necessary. But as a quick fix, why do young girls get PCOD today? Let's be honest. It's peer pressure. It's their stress. It's their sleep. It's their sleep and it's their sedentary lifestyles. These are the four main reasons why women, young girls have PCOD. It's a hormonal imbalance and birth control is only going to raise estrogen, probably get you to lose a little bit of weight and remove a couple of pimples off your face. But do you know the damage that it is doing to your girl's life and to your life if you're a woman watching this right now? Okay, birth control pills has every connection to do with that sadness that they feel. So all of a, all of a sudden, your young girl's on a birth control pill and she starts getting mood swings and she's sad and then now you take her to a psychologist or a psychiatrist and she gets a pill for her mood because it was caused by the birth control pill that she was given in the first place. Then you have migraines, you have blood pressure. There are so many women by just getting them off their birth control pills, pills, their migraines disappear because one of the side effects of a birth control pill is migraines and headaches, elevated blood pressure, sometimes elevated weight gain as well mood swings, back pain, all of these things. And then we keep treating them over and over again, never getting down to the root cause of changing their lifestyles. Yes, as children and teenagers, we didn't sleep as well. We didn't sleep for seven or eight hours. We had less sleep, but we had less stress. We didn't have peer pressure from people about universities and competitions in school and all of that peer pressure of how to be in society. I mean, look at half the teenagers today. Their social calendars are more than that of adults. That's peer pressure because women today who are of middle age are stressed out to go for parties because they don't know what to wear and they have all the stress whether they, someone's going to be wearing the same dress and their hair and their skin, all of that stuff. Imagine you can't handle that stress. How are your teenage girls and children handling that same stress? That stress coupled with less sleep, coupled with a sedentary lifestyle and all the pressure, hormonal imbalance, period. That is your root cause. Fix that if you truly care for your child. There are alternatives. There's good homeopathy, there's bad homeopathy. Make sure you have good homeopathy. There's good Ayurveda, there's bad Ayurveda. Make sure you get good Ayurveda. There's good nutrition and there's bad nutrition as well. The same way there is good medicine and there is bad medicine. You make a choice, but you get to the root cause. 
that's all about hormones each and every one of us you have a problem it is linked to a hormone period what would the root cause it may be very very complicated because the endocrine system is complicated in nature but there are four things that you need to get in balance your nutrition your movement your sleep and your stress levels and when we aim to have our lives revolve around this paradigm of course teenagers will party they will sleep for two hours they will sleep for three hours they may smoke joints they may have alcohol they may do all of that stuff which we probably did ourselves as well but that excess stress which they have today we didn't back then so things have changed and we can see it in the medical statistics all the time so now if you're struggling to lose that weight you have a hair problem you have acne you have all of these issues relax sit down introspect Evaluate your life before you run off to spend your money at doctors and nutritionists and healers and all of that stuff because someone will have a product for you to buy. I can guarantee you that. But sit down. You have a brain. You have common sense. You need discipline. Sit down. Evaluate yourself and understand, is my sleep okay? How are my stress levels? Is my food good? And if we're not willing to change this, guess what? The drug is not going to change your life. It's only going to change the reading on your param parameters, on your... Uh, on your reports I call it statistical deception unless your doctors treating you with a pill and telling you to change your lifestyle that's the only thing that is gonna work for you so have a good night everyone sleep well because we know right now with all these videos and talks that sleep is the most important ingredient for every one of us starting from children to adults to senior citizens to everyone get the right amount of your sleep and your hormones will start to fall into balance automatically. You see, the human body is intelligent. It knows how to balance your hormones. Do you think there's any healer out there, nutritionist, doctor, scientist, who has yet understood how hormones communicate with one another? Absolutely not. They haven't, which is why there's only a drug to treat one symptom at one time. Have a good night, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.